On today's video, Ian Bollard is finally here. And in this video, you'll have a comprehensive guide on how to finish this event very successfully. It's super simple, even on hell mode, everything you need to know about the mechanics of the event, how you can succeed. It's very easy to one shoot this event as long as you follow the guide in this video. You'll have a full run in here sped up because this event takes a long time. That is right, everything and anything you need to know about Ian's Ballard in this video. So sit back, drop a like on the video. YouTube, welcome back to Gecko Gaming. So Ian's Bollard is finally out. This is a brand new event in Rise of Kingdoms that came out on the last update. My name is Gecko, I'm a sponsored content creator by Rise of Kingdoms. And if you enjoy the content, drop a like on the video. Did you know that 56% of you are not subscribed? What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you get a notification, hit the bell, every single new update, every single new event we cover in here in Rise of Kingdoms. And again, we're a sponsored content creator. So the way this event works, is it's a mix between Soroli Crisis and Expedition, except that you don't need a 50% expansion to finish Hell, and all you gotta do is understand the mechanics. The way this works is you move through the map, fighting these barbarians. Now, all of them will have these three skills that you see up on the top of the screen. One of them being what I'm getting hit with right now, those debuffs, strip armor. For every one debuff, you take another 10% damage taken. I had no clue what I was doing on this run in the beginning of it, but the gist of this is very simple. Throughout the whole match, what you want to make sure you're doing is you are not stacking more than 10 debuffs. That means that when that number gets to 10, you have to get away from the target and let it target someone else. As soon as you do that, essentially the debuffs go away and you can start attacking back. As you can see, and on the bottom left, right of your screen, you will have a green little tent that I might be, I might be blocking with my camera. That little tent is a healing ability. Essentially, whenever no one from your team is being aggressed on, the whole team can camp up and heal their troops back up. That is right, you can heal mid event. So what you need to do, as you can see me doing right here, is everybody hits the target, but when one of the people has a 10 stack debuff or more, they move away, someone else starts taking those debuffs, and then they come back in to attack. That is all you need to know. That is right. If you pay attention to your debuff stack and the whole team waits until every single person has finished healing. The way you know people finished healing is you can see my alliance mates tents are not going green and having those pluses, but mine is. You can see when your alliance mates are done healing. And so long as you wait until your alliance mates are fully healed and then aggress on the next one, you're pretty much guaranteed to finish this event in one take. The thing that becomes annoying about this event, which you'll see in a bit, is how many marches are going to attack you at the same time. These marches do a decent amount of damage once you are getting debuffed, and every single one of them will debuff you even further. So in the beginning, you're only facing one march at a time, but as you will progress through the event, you'll face much, much more, mat more uh, different marches, as well as different types of troops that will pretty much do the same exact thing, and the same exact mechanic will apply throughout the event. Once the debuffs stack up enough, you move away and you come back. Now, one of the things that TC was doing on this run, and this run we actually stopped in the middle because I wanted to switch to the PC so I can record in a full screen for you guys and not like this. What you do in these types of things is once you hit the resting camp, you're pretty much guaranteed to come back into the resting camp every time you rerun this event. So if you decide to quit right now and redo the team, if the whole team made it to a resting camp before, or anyone made it to the resting camp for that matter, you automatically start from there. As you can see, we have here a brand new team, Pris, uh, Al, -Nam, Al Nam, and uh, Shin. We went in, once you go in, you get once more the little story and all that good stuff. And as you can see, we now start from here. 
which means we skipped the beginning of that first march, one march at a time, and now we're getting towards the two. The problem with two marches is that if both of them hit you at the same time, those debuffs are gonna stack twice as fast, and it's gonna be much harder to coordinate what's going on. At the same time, if the two marches decide to hit two different people, and those two people are gonna hit 10 stacks quick, and now they need to bail out of the fight and come back into it, and it causes a lot of confusion. The thing you need to know about this event to succeed is understand movement on of your troops and always have them clicked and ready to move away and come back. You can see right here, I move back, go back right in. Keep doing that again and again. What people try to do is they try to pull away marches. You can see right here, Al Nim didn't know what he was doing. He pulled this march too early and stopped all of our heals. You don't want to aggress until every single alliance mate has filled it to the max. You can click on their tents to see how many troops they have still to heal and pretty straightforward. In here, we had a little bit of a struggle of coordinating. It was the first time everybody did this event. And so some caught onto it faster than others. Not the biggest of deals. You guys will not make this mistake because you're watching this video. You all wanna target the one target and if it's possible, you want to get only one of them to aggro towards you while the other one stays back. If it's not possible, then what you should be doing is you should be sending one person to aggro away one march while the other three fight the one march. As long as one individual teammate is running around with a march right next to him while the other teammates are fighting the other march, it will be a very easy victory. It's super simple to do. You'll notice that as long as you stay far, far away from the one march that is being dragged by someone, as long as the three people don't get close to that one march that getting, that's getting dragged, it'll continually go after the one person while the other three smack into the one. And once that's done, all four gather together to fight the final one, just like we're doing in here. Super, super simple. Now I've sped up this run because quite frankly, this event takes an hour plus to do. It took us an hour and a half with a bunch of mistakes. It'll take you between half an hour to an hour and 15 if everybody knows what they're doing. But this event is a slow paced event. It's actually 7 a.m. right now. I haven't even slept yet. I saw the event happening. I figured I'd make the video real quick. Turns out it took about an hour and a half to get it done. But the thing about this event is once you get through all of these hurdles, you're going to face three bosses. The first one we're about to see right here. The three bosses are exactly the same concept. Each one of them has the three abilities that we mentioned. And for the record, if you send cavalry, you have a very strong advantage because all of these marches take an extra 30% damage as long as it's cavalry against them. Once again, cavalry being favored by Rise of Kingdoms. In the first boss, he has this AOE that does nasty damage. So what you wanna do is instead of stacking 10 stacks at a time, you wanna try to stack between four and six and then walk away and come back in as that will cancel out the AOE being hit. And from there, you won't take like 40, 50,000 damage like I took on this run right here. As long as you do the same exact thing, go back in and out, in and out, in and out, you should be able to destroy every single boss. It's very easy. And once you finish up the boss, a chest will pop up. It doesn't matter who in your group decides to open up the chest. Once that happens, everybody gets a reward. You have three opportunities to get rewards. Every boss drops them, and you can get the blueprints that we know are coming out of Ian's Bollard, as well as material chests. Unfortunately, I got a little bit unlucky and picked up the green uh, blessed blade. I don't really know how good it is. I wanted the purple stuff, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait again for the next time I can do this, but for now, hey, we got a blue crate. By the looks of it, it seems like Ian's Bollard can be done once every two days, roughly. I don't know if Ian's Bollard is gonna stay continually there so that every two days you can get it done. If that's the case, you have a potential of getting 15 to 30 purple blueprints or a ton of these green blueprints 
once every two days. Now, to make things even more interesting, there's gonna be many different challenges along the way like this one with multiple marches at the same time that you're gonna to have to figure out how you're going to manage. As time goes by, the more you do this event, the more you'll understand exactly how to position yourself. But there is one important thing you should know about this run, and that is the next obstacle. Before you get to the next obstacle, which is the toughest one of them all, it's the longest and biggest one that took the most amount of time, once you finish up this part, go past the forest pass into the next stage, you'll notice that once we finish these barbarians, we're actually gonna go down into the forest right to the bottom of us. There are two guardians in there who drop runes. Those runes are critical for you to continue. They're very, very helpful. You'll notice we pick up a 15% a defense rune and a 10% damage reduction rune. We decided to go for these guys first before we go down below. Actually, to be frank, I went towards that way and didn't know we had to go down. And so the folks were like, all right, we'll get rid of these first and then go down to the guardians and get those done. This is, by the way, about 20 minutes plus into this current run, not considering the first run we did. You can see the timer up on the top right. It's going and you have about two hours to finish this event. It's very doable, but it will take some time. You reposition around the map. You move through the event, easy peasy, get rid of these guys really quickly, go get the guardians down below, and then comes the bigger challenge. As you can see, we keep moving in and out. The most important thing is to focus the one target. In this case, there were way too many targets and we got screwed and destroyed. However, as long as you kill the targets, you focus one or two targets and kill it, and then you lose all your troops, the good news is that you don't have to restart. As soon as everybody's out of troops, you can just send a new march onto the field and continue on. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. So the way this event works is you hit things until you get 10 stacks, you fall back. Once you're done aggroing, you heal. And when you're done healing, you aggro again. If while you're aggroing, it was too much and you got wrecked, not a problem. Everybody suicide your troops in, march them to the to the camp where you started off and from there you can send four new marches now very important to know if someone gets aggroed no more marches can come out and no more healing can happen so you have to wait till your teammates all healed and all send brand new marches to continue through ian's baller again it's a super simple event you can go back and forth dying on every single stage and killing them one by one by one without even stopping to take stacks and it'll take forever because you'll go back and forth, but it can be done. At this point, you can see I dragged the one guardian away from my teammates. The three of them focused the one guardian, got rid of it, and then came to help me with this guardian right here. This is ideally what you should be doing when there's more one or more extra marches to hit. But what I didn't know is how bad it can get. You really wanna be targeting one march at a time and you'll see our next obstacle was ridiculously frustrating. My first attempt on it, I really screwed up. I thought, all right, I'm gonna aggro all of these guys away from my, from my teammates. They'll go hit the one guy. And then when they come back, when they're done, I'll just come close to them and they'll pick one of the marches out. Uh-uh. It did not work out at all. You're about to see what I'm talking about. When you go up after grabbing the runes and all the good stuff, you walk up here and there are tons of these wolf lookalike things and bear lookalike things. Now, these things are scary and they're scattered in a way that you technically need to be very, very, very careful. All you need to do in here is you need to cherry pick them one by one. You pick one individual in your team who is in charge of dragging the marches out and that individual has to walk very slowly up to the front, get one march to come out further out from everybody else and then come back in. My mistake was, as you can see, Shin is doing the correct play. He's trying to pull the side one away but I went to, okay, let me aggro all of these guys away from my teammates and then we'll figure it out later. No, the way you do it is the way Shin did it. 
you go and that's why we reset this time i was like okay let me try to catch these two in the center since you killed the side one already and it was the easy one to drag i dragged two out and two being killed is much easier than three and four and so forth and so on and from there we started dragging them out one by one the way you do that is very simple you'll see it on the screen in a moment you just try to make sure you come from an angle that only one march comes at you you pull it backwards all the way to this passage hall smash it and then keep pulling one by one this these marches in and yeah that was pretty much that this is the biggest obstacle of this whole course now unfortunately i was in lost kingdom light and darkness started we're gonna make videos about that very soon People decided to start scouting me mid-run. It was not fun. It blinked most of the match and it sucked because for like 40 minutes plus I had to deal with playing the event with the screen blinking red. I know that's super annoying to you guys probably. To me, it was a pain in the butt and I'm speeding this for you guys. Can you imagine what it was like to do this for a good probably 40 minutes of this thing straight up blinking red? Lilith, I don't know what your brain is thinking when you allow the scout alert to go off in an event where I can't leave to do anything about it without jeopardizing the event. Do not leave the event. When you leave the event, the run is over. You don't want to do that. You want to stay in the event, heal, recent marches, finish it up. Three bosses real quick. This is the one to final stage. From here, I believe you had, uh, we had one more boss and then another little area worth of things happening and then a final boss. It was super, super simple. At this stage, we were kind of like, all right, we got the point, we're dragging them one by one, we're healing. I wanna show you guys the whole run, so we're gonna go through this regardless, but you can see how we drag from the side one by one, every single one of these marches and just completely went to town. Heal, 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 all is good. I popped a 25% army expansion, not required at all. Even in hell mode, at the highest of levels, a 34 million power account who was playing with us earlier was very comfortable doing this and pretty much destroyed this event without even really caring. A 25 million power is the restriction for hell mode. And honestly, I'm fairly confident you can get it done at 25 million power, no issue. Once we finished this, we went on to boss number two. Boss number two didn't have really anything too crazy. No AOE, nothing that I really noticed. We just smashed it really quickly. We knew what we were doing at this point, kind of, and we just smashed it really quickly. Overall, this was a super simple boss, super simple thing to do. Again, get in there, hit it, 10 stacks, move away, D stack, come back in. You can go less than that. You can decide five stacks come in and out. Nothing really crazy. You don't really need to worry about it that much. Those bears showed up and disappeared instantly. I think we just destroyed them. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Second boss out the window. And then from there, once we got that second boss done, it was another chest, which ended up being some decent rewards. We picked up at least a few epic uh blueprints which was important thankfully we also got a couple of blue chests i was the luckiest one in terms of materials but again not enough blueprints for me to be too impressed with shin really got lucky and picked up 10 pieces the rest of us picked up five when you're done healing the final stage is this coliseum type of thing where tons of marches come at you those marches are super easy to kill but the whole point of it is that they all stack those debuffs at the same time so what we ended up doing thankfully it worked out is we kind of split apart kind of naturally around this coliseum looking like thingy and it was just all right we kill this thing we go kill different things it's super easy to kill them we got to get rid of as many of them as possibly quickly because we don't want them to come converge at us and do five ten stacks every second the first one was a bit harder to kill but the rest of them were really really simple Towards the end, what I decided to do is I saw my whole, all my teammates were on the one side. I went to the other side. I took away the aggro of like half of the marches while my teammates finished off one side and then they came into my side, helped me out to get rid of it. Once you get rid of it, you get the final boss. Now the final boss 
has one little tr side thing you should know. It heals unless you kill its healer. That's right. When the boss appears, it has this ring of fire around him. So long as you're hitting him, you're taking continual damage. It's not the biggest of deals. What is a big deal is if you stack debuffs. 10 debuffs, you march out, march back in, continue hitting it. Every now and then, it will pop this little figure right next to it. You'll see it on the screen in a moment, and that thing will heal it every single second. So what you want to do is whenever you see it pop, you go really quickly, one shot, two shots, the thing is dead, and then you go back to hit the boss. Very simple stuff. Kill three bosses, get the rewards, exit the event. That's it. That's Ian's Bollard. I'm gonna let it roll for you guys to see the end of this event, but I've spoken way too much. This event is super simple. I hope you guys understood it. I hope you guys enjoyed this run. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything along the way, leave me a comment down below and let me know. I'm Gecko, I'm out of here. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. Don't forget to drop a like on it before you leave and subscribe to the channel. We messed up the first time in here because we, by the time we finished all the little marches nearby, we had very little troops remaining, so we just died to the boss. That's the healer right there. You can see I'm, I'm, I targeted the healers. Very simple. You, we killed our troops. We let them all go home. We brought them back out full, full gear. Smacked the boss one time. Picked up the rewards. You'll see what they were in a moment. Thank you for your continued support, and I'll see you guys sooner rather than later. Take care and have a great rest of your day. I'm going to let this video roll till the end. But for now, I will be gone. Peace.